Hi everyone, this is Jim. Welcome to this postmortem of my Blitz game number 531. Um, before I get started on the game, I wanted to mention that I will be away from my uh, computer traveling for a few days. I won't be back until um, middle of next week, so probably around Wednesday, be able to upload some videos again. So um, anyway, enjoy, uh, enjoy the videos I've already uploaded or take a break. Uh, either way, I will uh, see you when I get back. Um, so let's take a look at this game. I start off with E4. My opponent played E5 and um, cancel that. E5. So I go with the, the main line here, knight f3, knight c6, and bishop b5, the Rui Lopez. Most popular move in this position. And now my uh, opponent plays the somewhat rare move, bishop c5, but not unheard of. This is a known line known as the Cordell defense, or sometimes called the, the classical variation. And you can continue with normal uh, Rui Lopez moves, like uh, c3, building up the center, or just castling, preparing to defend the e-pawn with your rook. Um, that's all good for... Uh, white, but you also have the chance to play the center fork trick, and this is one of those cases. Um, this doesn't always turn out to be an advantage for uh, for white to, when you can play this trick, but in this case it, it is uh, leads to a good position for white, so it's it's uh, okay to play it here. There's this funny idea uh, which uh, if you're black and you find yourself in this position, you can try this queen g5 uh, move. It's it's tricky and, and leads to some interesting play. It's, uh, my opponent didn't play this, but uh, it comes out with a double attack on the knight, and uh, you have to uh, have to play some careful moves to keep an advantage. You can drop the knight back to g4, supported by the queen, and then, uh, well, he can uh, desperado the bishop with bishop takes f2 check, um, and uh, try and mess up your position that way. It looks like that's the main line. Although after bishop takes f2 check, uh, you can even take with the knight. I was going to say, probably take with the king to defend the uh, g-pawn, being take with the knight. And how about queen takes? Oh, he's given up a whole piece, so you have to get the, the piece back. So queen takes bishop is required to stay in the game. And the knight to c3. It looks like, uh, well, the material is even, but uh, you've got some tempos on the queen and uh, reasonable development, you know, quick castling. So it's good for white. Let's see, uh, other lines here. The chess engine is suggesting h5, and I was kind of curious about this. Yeah, what if he just uh, wants to kick the knight and try and hit your uh, hit, win a win a pawn over here this way? Because he hasn't sacrificed any material just yet. Um, but you can start trading things off. Bishop takes c6, d takes c6, and d4 hitting the bishop. Yeah, I'm not sure I would discover all of these ideas in a quick game. That's interesting. Bishop takes g4. Picking up the knight, and um, bishop takes g5. Ah, oh, look at this, going for a queen trade. <laughs> yeah, it was kind of a long sequence. Uh, yeah, I definitely wouldn't discover all of that. So that queen g5 move is an interesting idea here. Yeah, let's go back to the game. In the game... Uh, my opponent just played uh, knight takes e5, which is what most people play and what, what I've always seen in this position. Knight takes e5, and then you play d4, forking the two pieces. So you sacrificed a piece, but you're getting it back. Um, the best way to play is with c6, kicking the bishop, and then dropping this bishop back to d6. I'll go ahead and put it on the board. Kick the bishop. The bishop drops back, and then this guy comes to d6, defending the knight. So now you, you take uh, the knight, and the material balance is restored. And black is, okay, white still has that opening edge, but uh, can play on from here. Um, let's see, my opponent instead in this position just took the pawn right away. And we're out of the opening book, and there's an advantage to, uh, there's an advantage to white at this point, which is pretty significant, because I get my queen out to an active square, and he can't easily harass it. Let's see, he played queen e7. I develop my bishop hitting his knight, and he drops the knight back to c6. And um, I really didn't uh, notice everything that was going on here. I mean, I really have just a winning position at this point with uh, bishop takes c6, which I played, and then uh, grabbing the pawn over here. <laughs> it's just a loose pawn on g7, and also it hits the, the rook in the corner. So this is uh, just a winning position for white. I really played kind of a sloppy game from this point forward. I mean, I've played okay up to this point, no, no mistakes, but missing this uh, 
queen takes g7 idea is pretty pretty sad. Okay, I just castled, and uh, we get into a normal position. Knight f6. I think there's other opportunities I have that I let go in this game, too. Uh, rook e1, getting the rook onto the open file, or behind the e-pawn, and making some sort of uh, <coughs> maybe indirect threats against uh, uh, black setup. But he just castles to get out of that. Knight c3. Uh, still, you know, white's in a good in good shape here, just because I'm better developed and a little more center control. But uh, really, I could have just been winning. So <laughs> anyway, yeah. c5 he played, kicking my queen. Drop back to e3. He brings his rook to the center here, Link, putting pressure on my uh, e-pawn. And now um, I played knight e2, which is a mistake. I think that, that lets him actually grab the pawn here. Knight to b5 is, is makes a lot more sense. Yeah, so this is a second, a second uh, real blunder from me. It's not uh, not that they immediately lose, but I'm giving up uh, chances. Um, yes, knight b5 would be interesting. Also, the move. Um, let's erase some of these arrows. The move e5 here would be good, just uh, harassing his knight. I'm not sure what I was thinking. I was trying to maneuver this knight around. I guess I'm getting out of the way of the c pawn, but now he can just grab my e pawn here and uh, equalize. So, uh, pretty pretty sad. <laughs> okay, he played b6 instead, uh, shoring up his queen side. And I go knight g3, and we're back into a situation where I'm just slightly better, but uh, nothing great is going on. He piles up more pressure on my e pawn. Pretty logical play. And uh, now we go on with e5. And now he can go, well, let's see, knight d5. He did go knight d5, hitting my queen, hitting my bishop. Let's see, I went queen to d2. And then he took on f4, yeah. So he, so black actually gets an advantage due to my uh, inaccurate play there. So instead of uh, uh, having a, a winning edge, I had two two chances to get a winning edge. Instead, I've uh, played weakly and then gotten into a slightly worse position where, where black is, is doing pretty good here. Okay, but uh, black doesn't continue <laughs> in this vein. He, he starts uh, making some inaccurate moves here. What's the, what's the best move for him to continue and keep the edge? Rook A to D8. Yeah, a very logical move. Just uh, why not develop another piece? Uh, put your rooks in the center like they like they teach you in all the books and all the chess lessons. So that would make sense. H6 is uh, also a move here, keeping me out of uh, the G4 square maybe, or maybe he's preparing to play G5 himself. Yeah, I'm not sure about h6. Kind of kind of looks like a waiting move. h6, queen g4, rook a d8. Yeah, rook a d8 I think is the main idea. So queen d7 gives me a chance to develop a rook with the tempo. Um, but I played knight f5 instead. I have some ideas of going after his king side now that the queen has uh, gotten away a little bit. And, um, and this is not bad. So he went queen c6. So that was his idea. His queen was over here. And so he had this idea of a two-move plan to set up this battery. But it's pretty easy for me to meet that threat with um, f3. Cancel. What did I play here instead? Well, I went queen g4, which defends here and attacks here. And looks like he could have taken advantage of this with uh, swinging his queen over to g6. It's not clear to me why that's so good. Queen g6, doesn't this just provoke some trades? Maybe because my pawn is weak at the end. Let's check this out. Say I just take the queen. He takes back. And that goes to g3, or d8. Hey, the material's still even. Is there a problem with playing f4 and holding on to the pawn here? Rook d2. Okay, so he's winning because, I mean, he has the advantage because he's uh, going to be able to uh, get his pieces active more rapidly than I can. I never took my chance to get my rook to the center of the file, to a center file, and when he gets his rook on the open file first, it seems like he has some edge. Hmm. Okay, so let's back up. Anyway, in this position, my opponent played g6, so we're in the range of about even still. I go f3 to blunt this attack and uh, to um, notice the pawn is pinned, so he can't really take my knight. I wasn't quite sure if I wanted to hop into... Um, to h6 over here, try to get to uh, e7, which is currently protected. So I was just kind of waiting and, and uh, playing a move to stop his attack along this diagonal. Uh, he went king h8, which unpins the pawn, and so now I go for this knight h6 maneuver, which is hitting the f-pawn. He really should do something about that. Uh, what did he play? He played king g7. Okay, he defended it that way. Queen h4. Cancel that. 
What did I play? I went queen f4. Okay, play a move to protect my knight and to uh, look at the f-pawn. And now, once again, he should do something about the f-pawn. So uh, f5 is the chess recommendation. f5 is um, it's interesting. I thought I would take on Passant here. f5, take. I mean, that's not so good. The queen just comes over, and this is all even. Let's see, do I have a better reply? Rook AD1. Oh, yeah, once again, just develop your rooks. <laughs> Makes sense. <laughs> I don't know why we're both uh, ignoring these uh, basic uh, principles. Anyway, um, he went Rook AD8, so I guess uh, he is he is uh, finally paying attention to one of the principles, but unfortunately he um, let this uh, F-pawn go, which I spotted this opportunity. So the third time around I finally uh, noticed the good move. Let's see, he plays Rook D7 attacking the knight. What's a better reply here? Rook to d4 attacking my queen is a better reply. Okay, yeah, rook d7, the second choice, seems to give me pretty significant edge here. I just drop my knight back to h6. Still have some threats along the f file potentially. Although he's got everything covered at the moment. His queen is covering the um, f6 square and his rook is covering f7. But, uh, well, it starts to look a bit ominous. Maybe I can push the pawn forward and interrupt the queen's defense of the uh, the king side over here. Anyway, he went uh, rook f8 to try and chase my queen away. Good move. And I went queen h4, getting off the f-file but holding on to the knight. Let's see, a better response might have been queen e3 coming back this way, also still holding on to the knight. Okay, but this still keeps an edge. He goes queen to d5. And I come in here with uh, knight to g4. I want to... Uh, make some squares available for my queen to come in. Let's see, once again, rook a d1 would be a good move here. I wasn't so sure actually about rook, rook to d1 in this circumstance. He could actually trade um, the queen for two rooks. I guess that's still good for uh, white. Anyway, I went knight g4. I went h5 kicking the knight, and I dropped my knight into f6. That was the idea I had. And so now he needs to um, <laughs> save his queen. <laughs> His queen is under attack, and uh, queen d4 check. Looks like that's the only move, actually. Um, other moves, uh, the knight is threatening to take the rook. So, uh, But there is a way to save it and leave white with just a, a modest edge here. Still probably good for white, but um, queen d4 check um, hits my queen as well as my king. So that forces a trade. And then he takes back with the rook, so his rook is no longer hanging. Now I finally get my rook into the game. And if we count up, uh, I'm just a pawn up. I have an extra pawn. It is a passed pawn. I would guess this is a winning position for white. But anyway, black can at least play on. Uh, instead, after uh, knight to f6, he moved his rook to f7, saving the rook but giving up the queen. And uh, after a couple of more moves, uh, I finally get my rook into the game here. <laughs> Played king h6. I did rook ad1, yeah, he went king h6, uh, but then he resigned before playing another move. So, uh, yeah, it was it was pretty much over at that point. Not a great effort, but there were a few interesting tactics in there. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. And uh, as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, uh, I will be away from my desk for a few days. So, um, anyway, I will see you when I get back. Bye.